Glider 3-2 Aerodynamics of Flight Let us navigate the intricacies of interference drag, a phenomenon arising when different air currents over the glider intertwine. When structures like wings, tail surfaces, and wing struts come together, turbulence increases by 50 to 200 percent. To streamline this intersection of air, fairings play a role in reducing interference drag. Next, we explore induced drag, generated as the wing moves through the air to create lift. Picture the air pressures as the glider travels, a delicate process where higher pressure under the wing curves around, filling the lower pressure area on top. The energy spent on this process turns into induced drag. Designers aim to minimize induced drag, ensuring that every bit of energy is efficiently used for lift and thrust. In the pursuit of aerodynamic excellence, designers utilize aspect ratio to reduce induced drag. Wingtip devices, or winglets, are employed to enhance efficiency by effectively increasing the aspect ratio without extending the wingspan significantly. Transitioning to total drag, envision a combination of forces plotted against airspeed. The curve represents total drag, the sum of parasite and induced drag. L, DMAX is the sweet spot where the lift-to-drag ratio is optimal, providing maximum glide distance in calm air. Now, let's consider wing planforms, the visual aspect of glider wings. The elliptical wing minimizes induced drag with a taper, though it poses manufacturing challenges. Rectangular wings offer efficiency with ease of construction, gently stalling with a pre-stall buffet. Tapered wings reduce drag with less area at the tip, and swept forward wings enhance maneuverability. Lastly, think about washout, a subtle twist in the wings. Moving from the root to the tip, the trailing edge rises, providing warning of an impending stall while maintaining aileron control. Design choices, from root to tip, contribute to the glider's performance in the sky. As we delve into these concepts, let your imagination guide you through the realm of aerodynamics and wing design. Now, let's delve into the captivating realm of glide ratio, an essential metric revealing the glider's efficiency in horizontal travel for each foot of descent. Picture a glider with a 50 to 1 glide ratio, covering an impressive 50 feet for every foot of descent. To truly grasp this concept, we explore the dynamic relationship between lift and drag. Recognizing the ever-changing nature of drag with varying airspeeds, we turn to the Glide Polar, a graphical representation in the glider's flight manual. This visual guide showcases the sink rate at different airspeeds within the flight envelope. It aids us in understanding the glider's performance during descent. The minimum sink speed becomes our focus, identified by locating the graph point with the lowest sink rate, indicating the optimal airspeed for minimizing altitude loss. Moving on, we encounter the best glide speed, a sweet spot achieved in still air. By drawing a line tangential to the curve in the glide polar, we pinpoint the airspeed that yields the best glide ratio. Now, let's introduce the intriguing element of water ballast, a game changer that modifies the glide polar, influencing sink rate and glide ratio. As mass increases, climb performance in thermals diminishes. However, if thermals compensate for the added weight, Water ballast enables faster interthermal cruises, covering more ground over time. Next in line is aspect ratio, a factor that shapes lift and drag. High aspect ratio wings, as seen in figure, offer ample lift at low angles of attack with minimal induced drag, contributing to the glider's overall performance. Weight, our third influential force, opposes lift and acts vertically through the glider's center of gravity. Thrust, the driving force, propels self-launching gliders forward. Whether from an engine or external sources like tow planes or winches, thrust initiates the glider's graceful journey through the skies. In this intricate ballet of forces, glide ratio, aspect ratio, weight, and thrust harmonize, orchestrating the glider's elegant flight through the expansive canvas of the sky. Now, let's navigate the intricate choreography of a glider's movements across three fundamental axes of rotation, yaw, lateral, and longitudinal. Picture these axes swirling gracefully around a central point known as the center of gravity, CG, the pivotal balance point where the glider's total weight converges. This point gracefully shifts with the glider's loading, adding a dynamic dimension to its aerial ballet. Firstly, we encounter yaw, a captivating movement around the vertical axis. Envision an imaginary line drawn vertically through the CG, representing the glider's core. Steering the rudder left or right orchestrates a mesmerizing yaw, gently guiding the glider's nose in the chosen direction. Proceeding to lateral movements, we delve into the elegant art of banking. 
This unfolds around the longitudinal axis, akin to a line gracefully traversing the fuselage from nose to tail. The ailerons take center stage in this act, swaying left or right to instigate a serene bank, revealing the glider's graceful tilt. Our final act unfolds along the lateral axis, portrayed by an imaginary line spanning the fuselage from side to side through the CG. Here, the stick becomes a conductor, orchestrating the glider's pitch, a delicate ballet of raising or lowering the nose, dictating its graceful movement around the lateral axis. In this symphony of aviation, the glider pirouettes and glides through the boundless sky, harmonizing its movements across these three axes. The dance is meticulous, with each control surface playing a role, guided by the pilot's artistry. Such is the enchanting interplay of yaw, lateral, and longitudinal motions, transforming the glider into a masterpiece soaring through the heavens. If you click, like, and, subscribe, and leave a comment, we will provide a coupon for a free PDF download one of nine ebooks. However, each individual can only download up to one out of nine ebooks for free.